Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you for that warm welcome. Thank you for coming out this evening. It's an exciting evening. We're going to have the contest finals in the West Division for the speech evaluation contest and for the humorous contest. To get us in the right frame of mind, we're going to have an invocation and pledge, and Miss Laura Elman is going to do the honors. Laura? Lightheartedness. It reminds me of the 19th century. Ether. It's all around us. We know what it is. We know it when we see it. But we just can't exactly put our fingers on it. What is it? And as soon as we try to pick it apart and understand it, that's when it just flips away. Nothing is less funny than when you're trying to explain a joke. And believe me, the way I tell jokes, I have to explain them afterwards. <laughs> Josh Billings said, there are very few good judges of humor, and they don't agree. My heart goes out to the judges in the room today because I think they have the hardest job. All of us in the room, um, I don't know what's on their ballots, but I would guess that it's not the secret formula to how to get a laugh. <laughs> so good luck to you judges as you judge the humorous speech contest. And to those contestants, I say congratulations, because you've already done the hard part. You've signed up, you've gotten up before, you've taken that first step. And I look forward to spending, to hearing the time that you are sharing with us. We're also doing the evaluation contests today. And I believe, Ethel Goatee, I believe I heard this from you. And I've taken it and it's really sunk in. <laughs> You're wondering, hmm, what could that be? Evaluations are always an opportunity to learn. And Every time you hear an evaluation, you get to see with new ears and hear with new eyes. And I look forward to hearing and seeing what the contestants have for us today. Good luck, contestants. So with just one more ado, I thank the contest chair, the dignitaries, the people who fill roles in this room. And thank you, contestants and judges. Humor, laughter, lightheartedness, whatever it is, and whatever your role in tonight's festivities, let's have some fun. Join me in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Kenton's chair. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much. Okay. So, the gentleman I want to introduce at this time. He's going to be the Toastmaster for this evening, a very distinguished gentleman in his own right, Mr. Iqbal Acha. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fellow <laughs> Toastmasters and guests, welcome to the wildest, the wittiest, the wordiest event in Chicagoland tonight. If it was any more wondrous, they'd probably slap a warning on it and call it Will Legal. <laughs> welcome to the 2014 West Division Humorous Speech and Speech Evaluation Contest. My name is Iqbal Acha, and I will be your Toastmaster for the evening. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to ask if you happen to have a WMD on you, a weapon of mass distraction. You know what I'm talking about, something that whirs, beeps, chirps, rings, twinkles, buzzes, annoys, pesters, 
wakes people up and disrupts other people's zen, please, out of respect for the speakers, the contestants, and all of those that are here tonight, I ask that you turn them off now. <clears throat> Before I go any further, there are several dignitaries in the room that I would like to recognize. Mr. Vane, is there a list over there by chance by you? I want to make sure I get everybody without looking like a fool at the end going, did I miss someone? Thank you very much, Mr. Eric Governor. I'd like to begin by welcoming our most energetic and effervescent Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Ethel Gautier. <laughs> our very, very concise and crisp Northeast Division Governor, Kathy Stroh. <laughs> Communicating Queen, the Diva of Dialogue, Miss Cassandra Lee <laughs> of South Division Governor. <laughs> the most fun and fabulous West Division Governor ever, Frank Hesser. Ah, the <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> beloved and beautiful Miss Barbara Beckley, <laughs> North Division Governor. Several area governors are here this evening from the West Division as well. I would like to ask our kind gentleman, Mr. Calvin Gibbs, our West 71 area governor, to stand. Our majestic and mighty West 72 area governor, Mr. Mike Vane. And our, I'm trying to find a J word, but I just can't, so I'm just going to say West 73 Area Governor, Mr. J. Fisher. And on the very off chance that I have neglected to mention or announce any of the current district executive leaders, is there anyone else in the room? Ah, yes, there is. The kind gentleman in the back with the beautiful smile, yellow shirt, and purple shirt and yellow tie, Mr. Don Williams, District 30 Administrative Chair. <laughs> Not to be outdone by the District 30 Club Extension Chair who sneakily snuck up behind him, Mr. Jerry Evans. thank you for being here tonight, and audience members, thank you for being here. But as you may already be aware, we have two contests taking place this evening, the Humorous Speech Contest and the Speech Evaluation Contest. The first contest will be the Speech Evaluation Contest, and when that contest has concluded, we'll have a 10-minute break. And after the break, we will continue with the Humorous Speech Contest. Now, this is a disclaimer. Everyone needs to hear the disclaimer because no one can come back and yell at me and say, you didn't tell me this earlier. All of our contestants, our timers, our ballot counters, our sergeant at arms, they have all been briefed prior to the beginning of this contest. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is aware of the Toastmaster International Rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the contest during the contestants' presentations. You may do so if, if time permits during the moment of silence and at, the, in, at the intermission. With that said, let the contest begin! Yeah. I'd first like to announce the speaking order of the contestants that will be competing in the speech evaluation contest. Contestant number one will be Stephanie Williams. Contestant number one will be Stephanie Williams. Contestant number two, Mr. Bob Roman. Again, contestant number two will be Bob Roman. Contestant number three, Mrs. Sadia Covert. Contestant number three, Mrs. Sadia Covert. 
Quest, uh, contestant number four, Kyle Knapp. Contestant number four, Kyle Knapp. Now, there is a missing candidate that might be on your agenda. That individual is not here. Is that correct, Mr. West Division Governor? That is correct, sir. That is correct. So that individual, Latanya Brown, will not be competing this evening. Now, in order for our speech evaluation contestants to actually compete, they need something and someone to compete and evaluate. So, we need somebody. And we have an individual that has stepped up to the plate. I would like to welcome to the lectern our target speaker for the evening, Mr. Sanjeev Singh. And the title of his speech is, Who is Sanjeev Singh? Who is Sanjeev Singh? Mr. Sanjeev Singh. <laughs> Toastmaster, contestants, fellow Toastmasters, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by asking a simple question. Do you remember watching the movie Slumdog Millionaire? Any one of you? Or let's say the most recent movie, Life of Pi. Anybody remember? Now the question comes, do you remember watching me in any of those movies? Anybody remember seeing any of those movies? <laughs> you don't? You don't remember seeing me? Because I was not there. <laughs> if I was a movie star, or some kind of celebrity, or some politician, I'm sure each one of you will be interested in knowing about me, who is Sanjeev Singh. Not being that fortunate, I've been thinking, what part of my life is so interesting, which I can share with you, that every one of you will be interested in knowing about me. And trust me, I've been thinking really hard, and still thinking. <laughs> if I tell you that I was born and raised in India, it's pretty self-evident, right, from my accent. You can say that I was not raised here in this country. If I tell you that I'm an engineer by profession, most likely you will guess that anybody coming to this country as an immigrant will either be an engineer or a doctor, most likely. Right? However, there is an interesting aspect about my profession. So I decided to be an engineer when I was in elementary school. I remember like third or fourth grade. You would wonder why. I mean, kid in elementary school and he already decided his life that I want to be an engineer. Let me tell you a story. In our community, we had one individual, the most successful individual in our community, the most respected and the most loved. And I used to tell myself, man, how can I become like him? So then everybody used to say, oh, he's an engineer. I said, you know what? I promised to myself, when I grow up, I want to be an engineer. It's been 22 years since I graduated. Still, I'm not the most respected in my community. <laughs> Still working on getting the respect from all the people around me. So I learned after the fact that it's not just education which gets you the love and respect from people around you. There's a lot more to that. So coming back to our fundamental question, that who is Sanjeev Singh? If I tell you, I live here in Naperville with my lovely wife and two daughters, 19 and 13. I run my own IT consulting business. I love working out. You cannot make out from my physique, but that's a different thing. <laughs> All these things may be an achievement for me personally. Why any one of you should care about me? My achievements, my life, whatever I have done in my life, will, will not interest you until and unless I show you 
that I have an interest in each one of you. The basic fundamental of life starts with the principle that I must first give before I seek to get anything from anyone around me, whether it's my family, it's my friends, it's my community, it's my co-workers. So what exactly can I do for you? How can I show my interest in each one of you? So fellow Toastmasters, we all have a common goal. We all have a non-competing common objective to be a better communicator, to be a better leader in our lives. The lives we touch around us, our family, our friends, <clears throat> our society, and the underlying force that how effectively we communicate with the lives we touch around us, that defines us. Somebody said, we are what we speak. Very true. We are perceived by the people around us by what we speak <coughs> and how we speak. That's how critical it is that we develop our ability to communicate with people around us. I learned the power and the importance of effectively communicating with people right when I was in college. I'll tell you a story. The first time ever in my college, I had to give a public speech around 100 people. You will not believe. I could not utter a single word, trust me. I could not utter a single word. I was standing at the podium for two or three minutes, and then so embarrassingly I had to leave the podium without speaking anything. And I'm telling you, I wish I knew about the Toastmasters then. My life would have been different if I knew about Toastmasters when I was 21. I have been so naive and so much in the darkness that those masters has been in existence since 1924. And here I am, 45 years old, and finding about those masters a couple of months back. But it's never too late. It's never too late. I'm glad. I can't tell you how happy I am to be part of this organization, that I am going to touch the lives of such an amazing individual, each one of you. I've been meeting people last two months, and I'm amazed. So, fellow Toastmasters, let's work together. Let's work to, work to, work to bring the best out of us, to be the best of the best. And how we can do that? By helping each other. When I speak, you evaluate, you give me the feedback to make me better. You speak, I evaluate you, and I work towards making you better. Tell me one thing in the world where so many people come together to help each one of us. There's always competing criteria, there's competing expectations, there's competing agenda. In any walk of the life you go, you go to the work, you go to the business. But this is one organization I have seen that everybody has interest in the betterment of everyone in the, this organization. And that's what I like about the Toastmasters. And that's what I personally feel, that when I show the interest in each one of you, that's when you'll be interested in, okay, yeah, I know Sanjeev. And that's why I will know each one of you. So at this time, let me tell you something. If we all work together, if we all help each other, and we try to bring the best out of us, I can promise you, the best things will come in the lives of each one of us. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Sanjeev. We will now give our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluations. Sergeant at Arms, 
please escort the contestants out of the room. And timers, I will ask for five minutes for them, beginning when they are seated. When that five minutes is over, Sergeant at Arms, please escort our first contestant back to the room. Now while the evaluation contestants complete their evaluations, I'd like to spend a little bit of time getting to know our target speaker a little better, don't you? Yes. All right, very good. So let's help them, let's help welcome back Sanjeev Singh to the lecture. I'm never comfortable behind these things, so we're gonna take full advantage of that. Let's see. I know more about you, not only through your speech, but through this lovely contestant profile that I have of you. <laughs> so Sanjeev, let's start off just by simply asking you three simple questions. Number one, what club are you in? Number two, when did you join Toastmasters? And number three, what is your current uh, Toastmasters level? So I am the part of the Beyond the Seas. <laughs> And uh, I joined um, Toastmaster, I believe, uh, first week of uh, September. This year, this month. <laughs> and I did my um, icebreaker um, last Saturday. <laughs> You're telling me that this is like your second speech? This is my second speech. <laughs> wow. Very so, Jeeva, I see several things on your consistent profile that I want to ask you about. Uh, let's start off with the company that you work for, ASAR America. Tell me a little bit about your organization. Are you the owner? Do you work for somebody else? And if it's yours, what do you do and what does your organization provide? So this is my own organization, which I formed six years ago. Um, as I said earlier, I'm in technology field, so I've been um, doing technology work. And I started this business. So we primarily focus on, uh, I don't want to get too technical here, but more like the business application which support, support our businesses. So I help <coughs> our organization, big organizations, you know, run these applications, tweak these applications, enhance the applications, and get paid for that. So if I had to boil it down for somebody stupid like me, you're an IT guy. I'm an IT guy. <laughs> so, Jeeva, I needed you a month ago when my computer crashed. Why are you showing up now? No, I'm just kidding. I also love your favorite quote. No pain, no gain. And obviously you're a buff Arnold Schwarzenegger type of guy. Oh. So, you know, the, the sport coat is just bursting up. Tell me a time when you experienced pain and you seriously pushed through it. Emotional, physical, spiritual, whatever it is, not just your regular old workout. Like we all have workouts that we have to push ourselves, but I want to hear a real story where this came into play. You know, this uh, no pain, no gain, at least kind of no. I have seen, like, I'll tell you, I said I was raised in India, so definitely things are much competitive here, but same thing in India. Like, if you want to become an engineer, if you want to do anything in life, they're like, because the population, there are more people trying to get the same thing, right? So when I completed my high school, as I said earlier, I wanted to be an engineer, right? And looking at the kind of, you know, the questions, looking at the number of people competing, you know, I said to myself that no matter what happens, I'm, I'm just going to give my best. I tried the first time, I didn't get through. One option for me was just go and pick up any just the science or any other discipline and just graduate from there. Or other option was that I had to just leave everything else and I have one focus, common, one goal that I have to do this. And that's where I felt that, that unless and until I push myself, I still remember I used to wake up like 2.30 in the morning. I'll sleep at 10, 2.30 in the morning. 
and study till like 8 o'clock in the morning. Nobody waking me up, nobody doing anything. It's all self-driven because I knew unless until now I realized that you they give and then you get. Unless until you have given enough of your hard work and your sweat, you're not going to get the thing you done. So. <laughs> Now, Sanjeev, you said you have two children, beautiful wife. How old are your children? 19 and 13. So you and I have a lot to talk about because what you just shared makes sense to every single one of us, right? You have to give them more of yourself. You, you teach them sacrifice. Do your kids listen to you? Because mine don't. <laughs> <laughs> just don't. You know, maybe that giving thing has not reached there. But I, I'm still working. To <laughs> so there's still hope for me. Very good. So, Jeeva, I want to first and foremost thank you so much for being the target speaker, but I also want to give you this beautiful, lovely award as being our target speaker. We are now ready to hear from our evaluation contestants. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> there will be one minute of silence before the first contestant and between each subsequent contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up, so you can start the time now. After all contestants have spoken, the judges will be given all the time they need to complete their ballots. They want to insert the Jeopardy theme song here. <laughs> I believe the Toastmaster made some announcement earlier. About that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Timer. Ladies and gentlemen, evaluation contestant number one, Stephanie Williams. Stephanie Williams, evaluation contestant number one. speech was the wonderful introduction. You really grabbed us with that wonderful humor. You engaged us with questions. It was wonderful. You have many key attributes of a successful speaker. Your voice is rich and it commands our attention. You have great vocal variety. You went up and down appropriately. Again, that captured our attention. Your story was very personal, and I appreciate that. We really got to know you through this speech, and that's one of the objectives of an icebreaker. And lastly, you used humor very effectively. You sprinkled it throughout your speech. Sprinkling humor throughout a speech is like sprinkling wrapped pieces of candy into an audience. We love it, and we can't wait for more. How can we make this speech even better? I have three suggestions for you. I've created an acronym for you to remember them because I have a feeling you're gonna get a lot of advice tonight. The acronym is POW, P-O-W. The P stands for pacing. Sanjeev, you used movement very well. However, 
I find that it's best when you make your point to stop moving. If you're moving and making your point, it can be a little bit distracting to the audience. The O stands for organization of your speech. You had, some, you had three themes that I could parse out. The benefit of communication, bringing out the best of us, and your message of showing interest in others. My suggestion would be to pick one of these themes, one of these three themes and illustrate it with several points. And also to tie that theme back into your title so that perhaps your title might be something like Sanjeev Speaks. Something a little bit more personal. And lastly, W. W stands for words. And because you're obviously such a polished speaker already, my advice would be to play with words a little bit. You could incorporate some alliterations. You could use some metaphors, some similes. I think these things might add an extra layer of depth to your speech. And that, again, would pull us in and engage us even further. Sanjeev, thank you again for this very memorable speech. I did very much enjoy it. To conclude, should you choose to incorporate my three suggestions of watching your pace, improving the organization of your speech, and playing with words, your speeches might have that extra pow they need to win lots of Toastmasters contests. Mr. Timer, there we have one moment, please. <clears throat> Thank you. Evaluation contestant number two, Bob Roman. Bob Roman, evaluation contestant number two. Three, four months ago, so you only gave us about three, four months 
synopsis of your life. So something like the best education would have been a better speech. And then at the beginning of your speech, I would have liked to have heard about what it was like pre-Toastmaster Sanji. Why weren't you that little life? Where situations in the job, you, were, you had to speak, and you didn't do such a good job, and people thought, you looked down on you because of that. That would have been more of tying in together. And then you did pacing. Pacing is good, but you kept them going here, and then you go going back. It reminded me of the clock, the German clock, where the one guy goes this way, and then he turns this way. When you do that, you can go all the way to this end of the room, stop, state your point, and then walk as you're going. But when you have an important point to say, stop right here, and then say it. It was great to call the action at the end, but if you change the title of your speech, Let's hear a little bit about how you were before Toastmasters. You'd have a terrific speech, and I look forward to seeing you in the Humor Speech Congress. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Timers, one minute of silence, please. Evaluation contestant number three, Sadia Covert. Sadia Covert, evaluation contestant number three. I kind of 
lost you at the end again when I when I told you about the answer to your question of who am I? I wasn't clear on that. I like to see strong openings and strong conclusions. So I think if you your opening was really strong, and I think your conclusion could have been stronger. Overall, I think it was a great speech, and I'm very impressed that you were the target speaker today, and that takes a lot of courage and a lot of will. So thank you thank for you. being the target speaker today. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you, Sadia. Mr. Timer, one moment of silence, please. Evaluation contestant number four, Kyle Knapp. Kyle Knapp, evaluation contestant number four. Sanjeev Singh. He's not a movie star. We know that. <laughs> but he is an engineer. He has his own IT company. He likes to work out and he gives good speeches. Those things we do know. So congratulations on getting through that speech coming into a room like this with a lot of dignitaries. Good job. You're confident. You had good pace. Very easy to follow. And you had a very uplifting theme that everybody could get into to get connected. We can all help each other. So that was very good. As I mentioned, your pacing was very good and your tone. One thing I liked that you did with your tone was very good is you went along with the same tone and same pacing. And then when you got to the end of your speech, I noticed that you picked it up a little bit. As the speech got to an important point, there was a crescendo and it came up to a higher rate and that was very effective to make a good, good point. You also used body language very good. There was a time when you, you had two stories I remember. One about being a child and, and talking about an engineer and you said, I want to tell you a story. You made a point, okay, now we're going to have a story. And then later, uh, when you're in college, you did it again. I'd like to tell you another story about when you had a speech and it was a disaster, but that was very helpful. You use self-deprecating humor very effectively, because that's something that we can all relate to. Who, who saw that movie? Well, I wasn't in it. <laughs> Nobody's been in the movie, so maybe you have, but most of us have not, so that was very good. I liked at the end, as I mentioned, the call to action, we can help each other. Some of the things with every speech where they're very positive things, very many positive things, I think there also are some things that we can work on. And one thing that I noticed that I think your speech would benefit if you give the speech again would be to have more structure to the body. I felt that you had a lot of good points. You started out who is Sanjeev Singh, and then it seemed like we kind of wandered around. I liked everything you said, and I was captivated, so it was a very captivating speech. But I think the structure would help to give us a roadmap as far as here's where we are now, here's where we're going, and then have some examples to point that out. It was kind of all over the place with being from India, about your accent, uh, being an engineer, doctors are immigrants, uh, you have your own IT company, so there are all these little different things, but I think if you have some structure and then give a roadmap, I think it would, would help the speech a lot. But in conclusion, I think you came in, you're very confident, you have good pace, you used body language effectively. These are things that I would commend to you to keep doing. 
put a little bit of structure in the speech, spend a little bit of time mapping it out, and I think you've got a winner. Thank you for your speech, you, Mr. I'm going to ask for silence until all the judges have completed their ballots and all ballots have been collected. So while we're waiting for these votes to be calculated, I'd like to call our past North Division Governor and Fall, Con Fall Conference Chair to the stage to talk to us a little bit about some of the upcoming District 30 events. <coughs> what do you say? Lydia, are you up for the challenge? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests. Are you ready for some fun? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You ready to stretch to success? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's our theme, District 30 theme, stretching to success. And just like Sanji said, we are perceived by how we speak. So you can come and stretch and learn different techniques on speeches. We will kick it off with our Achievers Breakfast with Joan Moore, Distinguished Toastmaster, in the morning. And then we will have educational sessions that you can come to. And when I, I want audience participation with this, I got this from the current North Division Governor. When I say Holiday Inn, I want you to say William Tell, William Tell. <laughs> okay, wait, instructions. When I say, how, after I say Holiday Inn, I want you to say William Tell twice. Okay. So, ready, go. Holiday Inn. William Tell, William Tell. Yes, that's where it's at, November 15th. It'll be at the William Tell Holiday Inn. William and we will Tell. also have distinguished Toastmaster Johnny Campbell, the transition yes. man. Woo! We will have a world award ceremony with a red carpet. Are you ready to walk the red carpet? Did you earn any awards? Your CCs, your CLs, your high performance leadership? You have the opportunity to be recognized at the District 30 conference. It will be fun, it will be lunch, it will be dinner and you will have educational sessions. So where are we going to be at the Holiday Inn? We're We're in town. Town. We're We're in town. Hope to see you there. I so want to break out in song right now, but I can't control my composure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask for a 10 minute recess. Hi, we can't buy last day. I would like to introduce our fun and fabulous Frank Hester, West Division Governor.
Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause to our Toastmaster. This is not easy to do. Thank you, sir. I just want to thank Lydia, too. I want you to notice, Lydia, on the bottom of the agenda, do you see what that says? See you at the District 30's Fall Conference. Yes. William Holiday Inn, William Tell Banquets. Woo! I'm with you. I want to call up uh, Linda Gaska because she's going to invite us to a different party. Linda, please come on up. <laughs> And by the way, uh, when we were doing dignitaries, we should have acknowledged that Linda Gaska was the first West Division governor. Uh -huh. Good job, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcomed guests. As Sanjeev said in his speech, Toastmasters began in 1924. Nine, here we are in 2014, 90 years later. That's fantastic, don't you think? In order to commemorate this fantastic anniversary, Beyond the Seas is having an open house in 90th Toastmaster anniversary celebration. And you're all invited to come. We will have a mystery guest, which we're not going to reveal until the actual day, and then you'll find out who that person really is, and it's somebody you're going to want to see, that's for sure. Somebody very important, somebody who has a lot to do with Toastmasters success. So please join us at Beyond the Seas on October 18th, which is Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Yellow Box. It's the Community Christian Church near the corners of Ogden and Rickard at 1635 Emerson Lane. And I don't expect you to be writing this down or to memorize that. So these will be placed over on the one table. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you then. Mr. Contest. With that, ladies and gentlemen, let us take a 10-minute break. Plenty of goodies. Cold soda in the icebox there. Thank you.